Yum, yum! Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this tutorial, I will be making this out of mesh operations, this piece of sort of tufted fabric that you would find on furniture, that kind of thing. I had a user email me and they had seen a uh, Blender tutorial creating this type of thing using direct modeling. Coincidentally, uh, Steve White, another Pixel Fondueer, created a uh, Blender tutorial just the other day <laughs> creating this exact kind of geometry using a, sort of a procedural technique with a cloth filter in Blender. So I thought, what the hell, I'll do this in Moto and we'll use just mesh operations. So this is gonna be 100% mesh operations and if you've had a hard time wrapping your head around mesh ops in Moto, or mops as we call them, then this may be a good place to start because it's actually pretty easy. And if you look at this object here, if I pop open the uh, mops list, I say if I pop open the mops list, clicking the mouse, uh, you can see a number of mesh operations here. And it, well, it looks like quite a few, but really these are just all the steps required to create this. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. We touch on the schematic once and uh, it's with a selection operator, which is something you should really know how to use anyway. So. Without further ado, let's make this thing, whatever it's called. Tufted fabric, maybe? Tufted leather? Puffy leather? Poofy leather? Something like that? Alrighty then, got a nice new empty scene. I am gonna call this uh, empty mesh item. Something descriptive like poofy leather. Sounds good to me. And I am going to collapse by pushing on this little bar here, the entire direct modeling tool panel because just like Luke Skywalker with the blast shield down, I do not need to rely on direct modeling to create this shape. I am going to do full mesh operations here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a mesh operation. So I'm actually going to drag my mesh operations uh, pop up over here. See it's pinned uh, to where our direct modeling tools were. And I'm going to add a plane. Said so I'm going to add a plane. A plane. Moto does not have a plane primitive in version 14. Just saying. Just saying, Moto, you can get a plane primitive. Okay, fine, I'll use a cube and I will turn the X, or I'm sorry, sorry, the Y to zero. And voila, we have a plane and let's give it 10 segments in X and 10 in Z. Now we have a subdivided plane and I will use this. Although it'd be nice just to have a plane primitive. All right, so next thing I am going to do is add a uh, assign a selection set. So I'm gonna do assign selection set and you're thinking to yourself, how does he know to do this second? And the answer to that is, well, normally I wouldn't. It's just that I watched the Blender tutorial where they go step by step through uh, creating this shape using direct modeling tools. And at one point they delete a bunch of edges. And these edges are something I'm going to create a selection set for now so I can delete them later because a few steps down the road, I have to delete all these edges. So I'm gonna create a selection set for this now. And I'm gonna set my selection type to edge. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it delete like that so I know what to do with it. And you can see it over here in stats now that I've created it. Uh, if you just kind of twirl down here, twirl down edge, twirl down selection set, and there it is, delete. And there's all those edges that we're gonna delete a few steps down the road. So I've created that now. And we're gonna move on and uh, do some more modeling here. So I'm gonna add a spike. Uh, spike often called poke or simply add point to middle of polygon mesh operation and uh, Moto likes to call it spike because you can uh, you know make them look like uh, spikes like like spikes we don't want spikes though we want to make sure the spike strength is set to zero and make sure you do that because I think by default it's just slightly above zero we want zero and so it looks like this and then I am going to bring in a delete mesh operation and I'm gonna use that selection set I had just created earlier. So delete, put it in there and boom, deleted everything, tutorial is over. Actually not quite. We'll turn our selection type to edge and again, since we have not specified any particular selection, it's just deleting everything. And But I need to go in here to the selection um, operators and do add selection operator. I'm gonna do select by selection set, right? And you can probably guess what selection set we're gonna use. We'll just select it from our drop down here. Oh, there's no drop down in Moto version 14. Uh, we'll just uh, type it in from, you know, memory. And you can see those guys there in blue or green or blue green or whatever color that is. That's what we're gonna delete. So there they go, they're gone. And you can see our flow is now diagonal. The flow is diagonal, which was what we want for this, these sort of diamond shaped patterns for this particular shape. And so we started off, we just sort of twirl down these guys like it's Photoshop. 
started off with this sort of uh, left, right, up, down flow. And by doing a selection set of those edges and doing a little spike to add some more, uh, you know, sort of diagonal flow edges. And then bringing in our delete to delete those vertical and horizontal edges, we now have diagonal flow. Okay, we are well on our way here. So I'm going to add another spike. Spike like that. And you may ask yourself, Greg, can we just right click and duplicate? Yes, you can, because we're going to add one more. And the thing is that just annoys the crap out of me is when I duplicate it, it takes the duplicated spike and it puts it below the old spike. Not only that, I'm pretty sure it actually, now this is just, I haven't thought a bug on this, but I think what it's actually doing, it's not actually putting the new one below the old one. I think it's putting the new one above the old one, but then renaming the old one spike three and the new one spike two. Yeah, it's, just, it's messed up. Anyway, spike three has got to be above spike two, right? Because I spiked it and I spiked it again. That really needs to be sorted out just because it drives sort of don't mix my socks and my underwear people like me crazy. Anyway, so we spiked it twice. We've got just like a ton of different um, edges in here now. And what we need to do is you'll see that some of these edges sort of at the epicenter of all these different uh, or some of these points at the epicenter of all these different edges here. We just kind of select them like this and kind of see what's going on here. Boom, boom, pop up one more, boom, boom, boom. You know, it, it creates this sort of alternating pattern. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a vertex bevel on these vertices to get the start of our buttons. Now, you can always experiment in Moto and mesh operations by doing a manual selection like this. And then you can add like a vertex bevel. Uh, or a vertex bevel, as I like to call it, a vertex bevel, I'm sorry. Spelling errors on my part, uh, vertex bevel. Click that, and what Moodle will do is it will add a selection operation by index. So it'll, it'll just grab all those guys I had, had selected and, and make indexes of these, which is nice. So I can actually go in here and just sort of experiment and just pull those out and go, okay, yeah, like yeah, that's what I want. But I don't want to do a manual selection. I don't want to select by index. Anytime you're making something procedurally, you want to avoid manual selection like the plague, right? We want to select things on a set of rules. And the rule here is real easy. If I turn off my um, vertex bevel here, and here's my selection index. In fact, let me just uh, turn this back on so you can see what's selected here. All of these guys um, have something in common. They are uh, connected by all these uh, edges here. In fact, 16 edges, right? So this guy right here that we are not beveling has eight edges, right? And this guy, say, right here that we are not beveling has three edges. So we need to create a rule that will select all vertices with 16 edges attached. Seems pretty easy. Seems like Moto should have that built in, right? No problem. So delete this whole select by index here. And you'll notice that uh, now every single vertex in this entire mesh is being um, beveled out into a circle. And we just need to add a selection operation where it's select vertice by number of edges. And so I'm kind of looking here and uh, yeah, nothing there. We don't have that, right? We also have a selection assemblies, right? So the difference between these selection operations here and selection assemblies is selection assemblies are sort of mini schematics that are created by selection operations, these guys here. Uh, with the addition of some logic nodes and some other nodes. In fact, you can add these to the scene and double click and dig into them if you want to. And you see over here, we have something that would be useful, right? We have like select polygons by edge count, but we don't, for whatever crazy reason, have select vertices by edge count. We need to make our own, but it's actually really easy. So I'm gonna go back up here to our uh, uh, selection operations. I'm gonna select a selection operator, colon vertex. And what that is going to let me do is select the vertices I need really easily with just a little bit of logic mixed in there. So I can close that and I'm going to pop open the schematic. And for those of you interested, this is the hardest part of the entire tutorial. It's not hard though. It's actually really easily. And I'm just going to drag my selection operator in here. You see the little yellow diamond. If I double click that, you'll see that is connected to my vertex bevel, right? I'll make a sense here. This is connected to this, feeding my vertex bevel the selection. And if I look over here under channels for the selection operator, I see one channel is edge count. So all of these channels here can be used to select relevant vertices. I can select vertices by their position in XYZ, by their normal, by their edge count, whether or not they're part of a border, by their index, 
So lots of options here, and of course I want edge count. So I'm gonna drag that into the schematic here, and then I'm gonna do something that's very moto-ish. I'm going to, I don't really want this here because I like the whole left to right flow. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna say separate channel. Now that doesn't really do anything, so to speak, other than help me visually. Still the same node, I selected, you know, they're both selected here, it's the same node, just one node. It's one node in two different places. And I'm just gonna drag this channel here, while the select channel is over here, and in between these two, I'm going to pop in a logic node. So I'm going to do add, and under conditional, you see all these different channel modifiers here. Under conditional, I'm going to do logic A is equal to B. Pop that in right here. And we're going to start hooking these up. And what this selection operator does is it loops through every single vertice in this mesh. So every single vertice will be examined, and it's going to have a value, an edge count value. So this vertice right here will have an edge count value of nine, while this vertice here will have an edge count value of 16, which is what we want, right? And so I'm going to take this edge count and slot it into value B, and on my logic node here, on value A, I'm gonna type in what I want. In this case, it's 16. So it's gonna go through every single vertice here, look at the edge count, and it's gonna compare that count to value A, 16, what I want. And if it's true, it's gonna pump the result over here to the select channel and select it. And so you can see that's already happening here if I look at my vertex bevel. But if I just select my selection operator here, you can see all of those vertices with 16 edges connecting them selected. In fact, I can actually uh, go in here and change this. If I turn this to like eight, it just does the ones with eight. If I turn this to like three, everything with three. If I turn it to nine, just those corner guys with uh, nine edges, right? 16 is what I want, and that's it. That's all I have to do. That is the hardest part of this tutorial right there. So we've got our vertex bevel. I can hide my schematic now. And I'm just gonna, you know, these are our buttons, are gonna be our buttons, so I don't know. It's kind of up to you. I think I made them too big in the previous one, so I'm gonna make them kind of small like that. And then I'm gonna do some more mesh operations. I'm gonna add another one. I'm gonna do a polygon bevel. So polygon, let me just clear out my filter here, polygon bevel. And again, I'm gonna use a selection operation to determine what I want because I don't wanna bevel every single polygon in this entire thing here, right? I just wanna bevel um, these little round ones here. And I don't need to use a selection operator for this. I can use a select by previous operation, which is super handy. So add selection, and we're gonna do a select by previous operation. Click that, and we're gonna pop, click it, click it, click it, and it's gonna pop over there. And we're gonna pick our source item, which is this uh, last vertex bevel. And the vertex bevel, right before it, we're gonna do the new polygon that was created. And you can see it sort of highlighted there, right? And so now this polygon bevel is just using this selection operation. It's looking at, it's reading this vertex bevel. It sees it created these new little circular polygons and it's saying, okay, we're just gonna operate our bevel on those. And we're just going to do a little inset bevel here, just like this, like that, see that, boom. And then I'm going to add another polygon bevel on top of that. And in, as you can guess, I'm gonna do another selection operation, select by previous operation. I'm gonna select the polygon bevel now, and I'm gonna select the front polygon, which is this one, you see it, you know, sort of highlighting there. Honestly, I don't know why they made the uh, component selection highlighting for mesh operations blue, where it's always been orange for direct modeling in Moto. Kind of seems like it should be the same thing, but. Again, I'm throwing out a lot of opinions on this uh, particular tutorial. Anyway, so we're gonna take this and we're going to move these up like so, boom. In fact, you can also turn off group polygons on both of these. I don't, it doesn't really um, come to effect so much because they're not connected, but technically you should, you would normally have those turned off. So I'll just turn those off, that's fine. And so yeah, we've got some buttons now, a little bit. This particular one, I'm gonna add some segments because we're gonna actually sub-D this later on and I want these buttons to retain their shape a little better. In fact, maybe even not make them so high like I did last time. So let's add segments, I'm gonna add three. Boom, got three segments in there now, one, two, three. And then I'm going to add an edge bevel to get a nice little rounded edge on here. So we'll do edge bevel, like so. And one more time, we're gonna use a select by previous operation. We're gonna grab the uh, polygon bevel two. Kind of see how this works now, right? So polygon bevel two, we're gonna grab uh, the front polygon and you can see the edge highlighting there sort of a little bit. Again, it's in that uh, not super useful blue green color. <laughs> 
and um, go to edge bevel and uh, yeah we're gonna just drag this out a little bit like so and again I'll probably give this a, a round level of two maybe and yeah there's our buttons looking pretty good so at this point I'm going to do some material creation and so yeah material do a material tag mesh operation and I need to set up some rules for this I actually need to give the uh, material a name we'll call it buttons and so this is a procedural material. It does not show up in the uh, shader tree automatically. You need to create a group for it and select it. So buttons, and we will give it a material and we will color this material like bright red for now. And as you can see, it just colors everything red because I haven't given this a selection operation yet. It's just, you know, selecting everything. Okay, so we'll just keep our uh, method of doing select by previous operation on there. And let me just pop over here to the scene again. Um, we want our edge bevel, which is our latest one there, and we want the uh, new polygons right there. And so here we've got ghosting on, and so I have to actually click up here to the material tag to see what's going on. So this is sometimes a little confusing for people. With ghosting on, anything above the selected operation, in this case, the select by previous operation, uh, selection operation, um, it just ghosts the material tag above it. But I can turn off ghosting like this so you can see it. You just won't see the selection happening. Uh, or I can, you know, turn on ghosting and just, you know, have, have them both selected either way. But I'm going to add a, a new selection operator. And we're just going to grow this a little bit. So grow shrink. And again, these are red from the bottom up. So it's going to select um, those guys. And then we're going to grow shrink it by a, a couple steps here. So let's do, um, let's do one step. See how that works. We'll do three in total. Now our buttons. Or uh, do have a material assigned to them now. And then for the rest of it, it's, it's really easy as you may imagine. Let's add another material tag and we'll call this one um, just uh, leather, poofy leather. And for our selection operation, we're just going to do select by polygon tag and we're going to select that material that we just created, which is buttons. And then we're going to do another one, which is an invert. So we're just going to select our buttons, invert it, and we're going to that's going to be our leather. So over here in the shader tree, if I add a uh, new group and call that you know let's select our um, leather from the polygon tag drop down throw a material in there and adjust the color you can see now that's probably the worst color to pick <laughs> in terms of showing this off so now we have materials uh, assigned to our object in the right place i'm just gonna make this white so it's kind of easier to see but our material assignment is done we just have a little bit more to do we need to push all these buttons down right to create that sort of poofy look and I'm going to be doing that with a combination of a procedural weight map and a transform effector. So the first thing we need to do is make our weight map. We need to make these buttons, these red buttons right here, uh, uh, the weight map going out one additional vertice there, right? So we'll do that with the vertex map. And let me just clear out my uh, filter here. Um, set weight, and so click set weight, and we'll call the weight map buttons, that's fine. And if I look at the vertex maps over here, you know, it's already created it and if I in fact if I go to just control 2 and go to vmap you'll see that it just you know made everything the same way to 100% because we haven't done any selection operations yet so we're going to do a selection operation let's do select by uh, polygon tag and we'll just select our polygon tag our buttons polygon tag which makes sense and you'll notice it isn't doing anything yet and again this may be a bug in Moto. I think it's really just how this particular mesh operation set weight works. Typically Moto's mesh operations will do a good job of automatically converting between component types. So in this case set weight wants points to set the weight on the points. But I'm giving it polygons from this uh, polygon tag, the buttons material. And so here in the mesh operation, since it's not doing it for me automatically, it does give me a little drop down here where I can say the selection type I'm giving it is polygons, and so it's changing that into vertices for me and setting the weight to 100% on the buttons. But if you remember, we need to grow it out one more. We need to get this extra little ring in there, right? So we'll just do a grow selection operation. So grow shrink, do one, boom, and you'll see it's now growing out. And if I come up here to set weight, and just a deselect set weight and come back over here, under my deformers, I've got um, my transform effector, and so I'm going to click that now. And because I have the weight map selected over here, it's just going to automatically set that to the weight map. 
If I look at my influence, it's set to weight map and, and the buttons weight map automatically, which is great. And you'll also have a locator in the scene now called transform effector, and that will let me do the transformation on our uh, vertices. Turn this back to advanced, we can get a little better view of what's going on here. And here's our uh, transform effector, we'll just have it selected and turn on my move tool. And when I move it down, I'm gonna be pushing all my buttons down. So you can kind of see how this poofiness is happening now. Buttons being pushed down. And now this is actually kind of where the blender material ends. I think they just do another subdivide on top or turn it into a Catmull Clark surface. I can do that here by do, doing another, another uh, mesh operation called set polygon type and turning this to Catmull Clark right there. And so yeah, it looks okay, looks all right. Not the greatest ever, but it looks pretty good. But I think we could do a little better with the smoothing on the top here, right? So if we turn off that set polygon here and just do a little more work with these vertices right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select them using another uh, vertex, uh, vertex selection operator. I'm gonna push them up a little bit to give my poofiness a little more a little more poofy, right? So let's add a push mesh operation. So we'll just do push. And there's my push. And right now I'm pushing vertices and I'm pushing everything at once. So if I just push it, I'm just pushing everything. And I want to limit it to these guys. And so if you remember, we're going to do the same trick before as you know these guys, those points um, are connected by, let me just show my verts here, eight different edges. And so we're just going to use a uh, vertex operator to select those edges, just like we did before. So just dragging this down under the set polygon type because I want this to happen first. I am going to do selection, add selection, and we'll do the vertex selection operator right there. Pop open our schematic again. Here's where, you know our previous schematic where we had already done that sitting right there. Just sort of push that off to the side for now. And we're just gonna do this again. So I'm just gonna drag this down here. There it is. It's just flowing over into push like our old one was flowing over into vertex bevel. And I need another one of these, so I can just Control D duplicate this one, or I can add it from here. Just do another logic A equals B, and then on our operator itself in the channel, is I'm going to drag in our edge count, and right click and separate that, and just drag it to the left. Now you don't need to do this; it just helps those of us who like to go left or right. I'm going to plug that into A, or I, rather, I'm going to plug that into B, and that's going to loop through every single vertice and tell tell us tell this node how many edges they have. And I'm gonna tell this node that if it has eight, then that's a match, and to say yes, and to select it by clicking, by connecting these two. And now when I push, I'm only gonna be pushing these guys. So I select this here, you can see, and I turn on a ghosting, you can see that those, the blue points now, I'm only selecting the vertices with the eight edges attached. And I'm gonna push those bad boys up a little bit, just to give this a little more of a, a dome shape. Whoops, push, get my push tool here, and just gonna push them up, look at it from the side here. See what I'm doing? Whoops, I grab my tool handle, Greg. So I'm pushing them up, getting a little more of a sort of a domey look. If I turn on my uh, set polygon type and turn those to Catmull Clark again, let me hide my verts here. Looks a little bit smoother, a little bit smoother, but still a little pointy at the top. So I can do one better. I can add another uh, mesh operation. In this case, I will be doing another vertex bevel. So vertex bevel, right, right, wherever text bevel right there and double click that guy and there it is and again I'm going to turn off my set polygon type until I get there and now here I, I'm just using the same uh, selection operation to get those same uh, vertices and because I'm doing the same thing I don't need to recreate this yet again it already exists in my scene so under my selection operation I do add selection and I just go to existing and I grab this existing one here, selection operation vertex parentheses two, which is down here, select it. And there you go, I'm grabbing those same uh, vertices again, the same ones I just pushed up. And I am going to do a bit of a vertex bevel on those. So I'll just uh, drag my, I like to do channel hauling or by selecting the channel and pressing C or drag the tool handle, I'll do channel hauling and sort of pull these out. You can see what I'm doing here, sort of pulling that out. And again, if I turn on my um, set polygon type and turn off ghosting so I see the result and go to the side here, I can kind of smooth those pointy tops out a bit to get a nice little bit, sort of a flatter look on it. Looks pretty good. And uh, yeah, I'm getting just about done here. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm going to, um, again, I'm gonna turn off the set polygon type 
I'm going to add another operator. Just put this back over here again. I can close my schematic, don't need it for the rest of this. I'm going to add a jitter. And here I am going to twirl this down. Let me just drag jitter underneath set polygon type. And let's do a selection operation. I am going to add selection by polygon tag. I'm gonna grab my buttons, whoops. Uh, polygon tag, material buttons. So I'm grabbing my buttons there. Turning the selection type to polygon. And then I'm just gonna channel haul this Y and push them up a little bit. You'll see that they're going to hell which is now what we want. So we need to click on Rigid Translate. So now instead of um, translating all of these vertices individually and sort of jumbling them up and jittering them, it's gonna take all the vertices that are connected and just jitter those. But in fact, we wanna grow this one more to grab that bottom ring. So I'm just gonna go over here and do Grow like that. One more time, Greg. We're gonna do not existing. Make sure you're not an existing. And we want a new grow. Boom, we're just gonna grow up by one. Grab those bottom ones there. And now we're just jittering these guys. So with the Y range selected and my uh, channel hall going, in fact, I'll just get all of these guys here with my channel hall range X, Y, Z. And you can kind of see how this works. We're just adding a little bit of randomness in here. So we can move Y, some are moving up, some are moving down. That's what we want. So it's jittering within a range of about five millimeters. Let me make sure to enable both X and Z over here. And again, I'm just doing some little bit of uh, randomness in here by moving these buttons around on X and Z. So there's just, a little bit going on. So if I look at it from the top, you see all the red buttons. And uh, if I turn off jitter, you see how I sort of push in a little bit here, turn on jitter, they'll move around just a little bit, right? In fact, let me turn off Y. You can see them moving around in Z and X. And if I go sideways here and enable Y, you see them all moving around and why a little bit. So just adding some natural sort of jitter to the scene, looking pretty good. And we're almost done. Uh, if you look at the UV map here, so it, it started with a plane, if you remember, and it's been creating UVs this whole time. And actually, Moto does actually a really good job of creating uh, usable UVs with all of these mesh operations going on here. So if I look at the texture map, and you can see it here, it's just really good. There's nothing overlapping or anything. It's just not taking up the full zero to one space. And so I can add a mesh operation for that. We have a mesh operation for that. We have an app for that, as they say. So these are just getting filled out. You know, every version of Moto gives us more mesh operations. It's, you know, it's an interesting program if you're new to Moto. It started off entirely direct modeling and this sort of Houdini-ish workflow with mesh operations um, was added sort of 10 years in. So it's been a long and sort of uh, arduous process adding all these uh, vast amounts of direct modeling tools and UV tools as mesh operations, but we're getting there. We do have UV fit, so I can just uh, double click that guy and you'll see it just fit my UVs to the full zero to one space. Boom. And I can turn on uh, my set polygon. Um, let me just sort of get rid of my UV view. We'll turn that back on. And uh, I can put this underneath the set polygon type and then we can turn our um, uh, Camel Clark sub uh, dividing or sub Dean back on there. Let me just close this now because we are done. So there it is. And I could turn off a uh, wireframe. So it's looking pretty good. And again, I, we can look at the um, UV map one more time because if you, whoops, this guy, uh, if you turn on Camel Clark sub Dean, you're going to get sub Dean on the UV map as well. But there's a simple uh, remedy for that. You just go over here. Um, to the uh, properties in the item. And under surface, uh, you would have linear UVs. And so when that's turned on, uh, we have nice Camel Clark smoothing there, but the UVs stay linear. So you can get uh, nice seamless textures there uh, without having to uh, worry about it. Uh, with, again, you know, have seam errors or any sort of overlapping. So it really depends on what you're doing. You might not want to do that, but you have the option to do it. So there it is, poofy leather, um, all in mesh operations. And you may ask, why would you use mesh operations? You could have done it super fast with just direct modeling. Well, yeah, that's true, but you can also do it super fast with mesh operations. I know this is sort of a long tutorial, but if you just go through these really quick, you can do this in like just a few minutes. It's really pretty quick. And because they're mesh operations, I can always go back to cube and do things. Let's turn off uh, ghosting here so we can see the result of what we're doing. And I can you know, like adjust my cube from um, say five, you know, 10 segments to five like so. Now I have sort of a different looking 
uh, quilt pattern and I can go in and redo my uh, my beveling as well. So my initial vertex bevel, I may want to like, um, you know, double that, do something like that. It'd be nice if we had percentages here, like per some sort of percentage rigging we can do. You can actually rig these, these are all channels. So theoretically you could like put in some math nodes and rig any adjustments to the cube size, the initial plane size, to any of the beveling or anything else going on uh, without really any you know, big problem. It's just taking the time to do that. So you can make fully procedural um, uh, quilted patterns like this. And then you can actually wrap all of this up in a, you know, a mesh operation assembly and expose channels like uh, you know, number of segments or you know, length like X and Y, so we can do this type of thing. You know, we can get twice an X and then you can get number, twice the number of segments in X. You can do all this type of stuff, you know, procedurally to give you exactly the type of panel that you want. Um, but that's really a different kind of tutorial. And there's other tutorials out there that show you how to, you know, collapse this into one just sort of item with just a handful of user channels to you know adjust the length or height or you know uh, size of the buttons and stuff like that but it's it's pretty cool and there you go hope that was useful yum yum